I think that's the biggest problem uh, in, in for the most people when mm -hmm. train a dog, that uh, they are not able to uh, bring the dog in the right position, that the dog is really, um, he wants something from the handler. And, and he said goodbye to the environment. I've got an amazing show for you today. Um, this guest that I've wanted to have on for many, many years, he's a hero to a lot of people. He's a trainer, he's a competitor, he's an author. Um, he's a Kormeister with, with Belgian Malinois. Um, Peter and Connie Scherk are icons in the field of IGP. Um, not often that I ever do this, but this book here is a book that I have read. I've read through it entirely, and now I'm on my second go around. I'm gonna talk to them about it. You can see all my highlights in here. This is um, a stellar book. I, I mean, I don't think I can recommend any other book as much as this. It's a very, very good book. But more exciting, I actually have Peter and Connie on the show, and we've talked before in German. Um, they were hard to convince to come on the show, but, um, but I got them. Um, I think this is going <laughs> to be fantastic. I want to bring them on, and um, let's, start, let's start talking. So Peter and Connie... Welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here, all the way from uh, Germany, Augsburg, or is this where you are? Close to Augsburg, yeah. So yeah. Um, you are one of the legends in IGP. You are in uh, in Schutzhund, in IPO, whatever they're calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah, and you're very modest. That's very, very cool. Um, I, 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 I have so many things I want to ask you, and so many things I want to talk to you about. Um, the sport has always fascinated me. I went into it as a, as a hobby for a little while. Um, I was very busy with my other things, but I have many friends who do the sport, and I am a huge fan of the sport. I love everything about it. I, I love every aspect of it, all the phases. Um, what, how did you first get into the protection sport did you do other things first i mean you've had obviously a very very successful and full life but what what brought you to want to do protection sports we have two stories now it's okay <laughs> <laughs> even better <laughs> and started yeah. oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's a long time i was really, really young and i was really much fascinated from the dogs and when i get one it was always in my mind that i wanted like a german shepherd but of course in, when i was a teenager i had not enough money to get one with the papers with the pedigree and so i have a german mix and um when i'm walking with my dog and then i can see from a, a german shepherd club sv and it was in far away and i can see the protection work then and that was so fascinating first i think it's from the police and uh, but then i often walk by and then i can see that they are training and then i start to say ah oh, hello can i be one time try it and uh -huh. so, so it comes more and more how long ago was this for you connie <laughs> no you can count how old i am no no <laughs> i won't i would never ask my wife to would kill me <laughs> and that's now um more than 40 years ago wow okay okay got it okay and then and that's and peter it's it's it was in the same time so i was also 40 years old i got my first dog it was a boxer uh -huh. and it was um, really hard to get this dog because my parents always was against the dog they don't they said we had a cat and they said ah oh. <laughs> when i said i want a dog they said ah oh, we have a cat it's enough and and um then, yeah, like children do it every day. I was talking to my parents and, uh, yeah, so it was in this time when I was 14, I, they said, yes, I got my first dog, but then it comes a lot of problems. It was a boxer and when he was maybe half a year old or something, he made a lot of stupid things. He started to fight with other dogs and when we released the leash, he runs away and, and all these things. And my parents was consequent. They, they were, were consequent. Mm -hmm. They said, uh, you want the dog and now you have to educate the dog. And they brought me to a dog sport club here in Augsburg. And, and, uh, and they said, yeah, they, here you must uh, train the dog. And then I saw first time this uh, people, 
I remember and uh, I was there and there was one guy with it was my first um, um, what is it um, first view first view from from dog sport there yeah. was one guy he was walking and the dog was next to him and he didn't run away without any leash and I was fascinated <laughs> I said wow how right. is it possible that the dog goes together with this guy yeah and, and then I saw first protection work and, and I was really uh, fascinated I I was totally sure my Dino was the name he should do the same he should protect me when a bad guy is coming and so and uh, well so and it starts in this time and and in this time it was uh I think there was no other sport. It was in Germany. It was yeah. no agility and and all these yeah. other sports. It was ITP or yeah. Schutzhund, Schutzhund was it yeah. in this time. Schutzhund. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. you two started to you did you two meet in the sport of dog sports? Yeah, a few years later. It Fantastic. was. Uh, it, it, it's a nice story. I started when I was 14 years old, Connie also, when she was 14. Uh -huh. And then I was uh, around 21 or 22 when we meet each other, on, of course, on the training field. Yeah. <laughs> and then we fall in love and it fits perfect together. And, uh, tomorrow right, so we celebrate 30 and one years that we married. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah, that is so time. cool. <laughs> that is a long time. I know my wife for 30 years, but we've only been married one year. <laughs> but, but that's a long story. So I understand. I, I understand that. Um, so you didn't start both. You, uh, Connie, you started with a German Shepherd mix and then Peter with a with a, a boxer, you said, right? When did you did you have any other dogs before you went to the Mali? Have a um, one time more, uh, two times more German Shepherds, mm. and then we uh, come together, and then we come more in the um, the in the mixed breed is only dog sport. So I have different breeds in uh, there. There was the Boxer, the German Shepherd, and all these other breeds. And then it starts also with the Malinois, yeah. and um, it comes more and more that we have. I lose the contact to the SV and I can see that the Mali is also a very nice dog and a very active dog. And so we, tr we tried it once time, this breed, and then we fall in love. <laughs> One time and then no more any other dogs. That was all, you always stayed with the Mali after this? Yeah, it was. Uh, I had a few boxers, but uh, in, it starts more and more that. Um, they had so much problems, health problems. Yeah, for sure. With all my, my friends, they had boxers and, uh, when we trained together. And there was one guy, we trained really a lot together. And he, in the end, he has four or five boxers and he can't train with one of them. All was sick. Yeah. One has a back problem, one has a heart problem, one has can't breathe. And so, mm. and in this time, we started to uh, try first Malinois and, and we like this breed and tell tell me what you like about them because i know what i i i like about them their personality they're 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 just so focused they're so they're just the ultimate dog um what what makes them special from a from a technical side like why do you like them for the sport so much on one time of course it's the body mm -hmm. i think he's really he has a super body, super healthy body, and, and not so much problem. Now we have so many Malinois in our club, and no problems, no health mm -hmm. problems. And, and that's, of course, uh, very, very important, because we are people we don't want to give to sell the dogs. When we say yes to a puppy, we have them always to the end. And so uh, it's really important that we uh, have do yeah, dogs with, with a good body. Yeah. And then we like the character very much. Mm -hmm. They they um, they have so um, intensive connection to to very yeah relationship to, to to the to the humans. So they are not only because of the prey or for, about the food they uh, work together. So they, they they feel so 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 happy when we are praised. Yeah, so, I agree. <laughs> 
agree. We, we always, <laughs> it's a little bit about the language because <laughs> we know our problems that Connie very often, she said, uh, when she said, I praise my dog, she said very often, I pray my dog. And then we, we talked about before, <laughs> <All right. laughs> we said, we must be careful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always I... say, we was in the, uh, some, right. somewhere. Right, especially we were, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, we were. <laughs> And yeah. our it, daughter, she told us, you must oh. say it right. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if it, was, if it was in German, my German is a lot worse. <laughs> oh, no. no, no. <laughs> the next one we do all in German. <laughs> then you can laugh yes, at me. That, this, this <laughs> would be nice. Yeah. I would love to try it. That would be very funny. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you said something that I really admire. And you said that the health and all this is so important because you don't like to give up the puppies. And so many times I see people, very good competitors, they get dogs, it doesn't work out, there's something wrong, they get rid of the puppy, they get another dog, they get rid of that one. They take, it takes them several dogs or puppies to get to the one that will make it to even a regional level of competing. What is your technique or secret when you look at a puppy that you know or feel in your heart that this dog will become a, for you a champion but for anyone else a a good dog to to train with and compete with hmm. that's a good question it's one time of course we look to the bloodline we look to the parents, grandparents, and so on and so on, and we know them a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, of course, an advantage that we have the knowledge from the bloodline. And then, of course, we have our idea how we select them, that, that, we, that, that we look when, when we go to a litter, that uh, we try to take this one out. We <laughs> it fits in our idea. Talk, so. talk about that for a moment, if you would. What do you look for at a six, seven, eight week old puppy that, that gives you the, the, the idea that this dog will be a good dog or the right dog for you? We need a, a self-confident dog, of course. If you have a dog who's shy of everything, that's, I think it's not a good thing. Yeah situation to make them the competitions and also we need a dog they like their humans so we we are search also for a breeder that he have a lot of contact with the humans that he likes humans it's our way for um, training is a, a lot of praising and all these things that they thought the dog feels happy so it's necessary that a dog likes it of course then of um then a little bit prey drive that you can see that the dog Good work is a little bit active, and also that he, um, for the protection, we need a dog who likes it, uh, also to fight a little bit. So that if you don't not only like playing with, with friends, also a little bit more harder playing, and uh, then that the dog feels oh, it's fun, and then I think oh, it's then it's a good dog, perhaps fast. I think in the litter, very often the people they when they look to a litter they are meaning the most active dog who plays the most or is a little bit um uh, yeah also a little bit aggressive or or is playing the best so it's the best of the litter and we are not this meaning oh. is it right yeah yeah we um because it's for our sport and our dogs it's very important that they are robust so mm -hmm. robust Yep, that they are not weak dogs because very often if you have puppies they play really super good in in the litter they they are so active and so but when they are a little bit weak soft dogs mm -hmm. then it comes less and less and less when they come older because it, it's so often that something goes against their mind that uh, they uh, some something is it's too hot it's it's cold it's raining it's snowing and, yeah. or, or uh, also in, in in training something goes wrong not not always all is perfect mm -hmm. and so um, 
then this kind of dog, you, you can see they are super puppies and then they come, reduce. Uh, re they reduce the drive. Mm. And uh, if you have a robust dog, for example, uh, a puppy who has a normal drive in, in, in uh, when you look to the litter and uh, he's robust, he's a hard puppy, he's, he's a strong puppy and you do a good job as a handler that you give them always a good feeling and, and have a good relationship and then they come up and uh, grow up and come more and more and more mm. and so you, we are the so meaning if you say one time yes to a puppy then it's for the life then then yeah. it's up to us to uh, make a good dog out of the puppy I, that is so important coming from somebody like you because I wish everyone who goes into this sport would hear what you're saying. And I remember with my dog, Goofy, um, I, I, I bought him. I, I really loved him. He, we did a lot of stuff. And sadly, at that time, 12 plus years ago, um, I didn't have access to a very good IGP club. I'm not going to say any names or anything, but they didn't do a good job in developing the dog. And he got very, you know, he had bad experiences at the club. And everybody said, get another mm -hmm. dog. And I said, well, if the sport is not for my dog, then the sport is not for me. And I stopped. I did it just hobby wise on the side. I didn't compete anymore. I didn't train anymore professionally like that. But your, your, your statement, both of you, Peter and Connie, is so important that people understand that your decision is for the life of the dog and you owe the dog that, that you will, you will, be, the, you will be an advocate for the dog, you'll take, you'll do what's best for your dog. No, so I... we have, if also the meaning, if you choose a puppy and you are thinking it's a good puppy, it's uh, it must it has to become better and better and better. If you have a yeah. good system, yeah. if a good puppy comes first or more weak, then your system is not the right one, a good one. For sure, I agree with you 100. Mostly, most the dogs have a much better quality of, of uh, than handlers. Most of the handlers are the problem if it comes not good. I agree with you so much. L let's, I'm going to bounce around. There's so many things I want to ask you. Um, let's talk about that because I think it's such an important piece that you just said that the handlers and also sometimes the helpers are the problems with the dogs because they can take a really nice dog and ruin the dog. What are the steps that you would take to prevent that from happening or to try to prevent that from happening with your puppy before the puppy gets strong enough or mature enough so that we, we don't ruin the puppy? So I think most important thing is that, <laughs> <laughs> that you are really always absolutely fair to your dog, that you explain all what the dog should do, that, that it makes sense for the dog, that so and, uh, fairness, is, I think, is really important. They didn't yes. ever correct the dog for something he uh, don't know. Didn't yeah. don't know better, and and so, and a lot of handlers or people they try to make it with pressure to to learn a dog what what he should do. And this is what we really don't like. Mm -hmm. We our idea is always, and this comes more and more, that we try to manipulate the dog that he wants to do what he should do what stands yeah. in the rules and what, what, what we want to compete when we compete, what we want to show to the child. And so, um, yeah, and this makes the dog really happy. And this makes the dog more and more confident mm -hmm. when the dog always has the me is the meaning. It's his own decision. He, he decides what is what, what he's now doing. And this give, gives the confidence to the dog. When they are young, he only, uh go to the helper who we know very well that they are uh, good helpers to make the let the dogs grow up and yeah confident and... so let's talk about that for a second so at, let's say you have a puppy you get the puppy at eight weeks um you obviously do and you talk about it a lot in your book here and i'm you, i there is only the obedience book because we need the protection book and i know that's coming out I'm waiting. It needs a bit of time to translate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, want to, I want that book. Um, but, but you talk about all these motivational things you do, and I, I just love your approach to it. I mean, it's very in sync with how, how I believe in training and how the people that I admire and respect 
believe in training as well. So I don't think, you know, I, I don't think there's a great difference in training, in good training. Um, but what, I, what I'm wondering is when you look at something, for example, um, building the confidence in a dog for bite development. So you have a young puppy and you want, you'd start doing early on, what, what would you be the first phases you do? Rag work or something like that to get the dog's prey drive and, and confidence high? Of course, we also train on, on the play drive. Yeah. But this is what the handler is doing in our uh, idea. The handler makes a lot of play drive with the dog. He plays a lot with the dog. And also, he makes all these emotional parts and so in training. And so he he's training on this. And in bite work, we start really early, with uh, but not with play drive. We build up the confidence and we do a little bit uh, this aggression part and so we, we teach them that they uh, bark uh, very good and, and have really together in the prey drive then it's always a mixed mixture yeah it's mixed together and it's not separated and so you can do it really on a, on a nice and funny way with really young dogs. We always start when they are 11, 12, 13 weeks old, when they have this, uh, uh, this, this social yeah. phase. Yes. It's, it's in, yeah. Uh, and in this time, we, we start with protection work. And we do this really since more than 40 years with all our dogs. Okay, I want to talk about that because this goes against something I've heard from other people say. So this is very, very interesting. So your idea is that the prey work comes from the the handler, right? You get the handler to yes. do all the prey work. But when you do the building, the confidence for the protection, then you want the young puppy to learn how to dominate, to bring those defensive drives higher and his confidence higher. And you do that very, very young. Yes. Yeah. And the problem is you must think um, about when, when you have a puppy in this social phase. And then in your normal life, always when the puppy, he says, oh, maybe this is a dangerous situation or that's a bad guy or something. You have always in this phase, they start to react a little bit. Right. And then, the, the, well, and then everybody says, oh, uh, no problem come with me look it's, that's it's not, dangerous. not dangerous that's a nice guy that's a, so we always give them the feeling we don't like that they fight against each uh, anything okay so, and yeah and uh, and then but uh, yeah. in this space we start with the uh, uh, protection work so we of course in the normal life we tell them all oh, all is nice it's not necessary to be aggressive and all these things but then in this phase the dog uh, has the feeling oh um i don't know the situation i'm not totally sure what should i do then we can say oh look that's a bad guy mm -hmm. and then we, we start with a big big distance that uh, helper shows fear if the dog only looks to him then the dog the helper shows fear and then yeah. he runs uh, okay and the little puppy says oh I'm so strong, I make them fear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only if I look to him. And so mm -hmm. the confidence starts more and more that they start to say, oh, that's a, a funny way. And we combine it always with rituals, of course, that they never become uh, aggressive in normal life. So that it's only because we say, oh, let's start, there's a bad guy and so on. So you, you do this in a controlled think? environment. Sorry. So you, so you do this do in a controlled environment when you teach him this. If the dog was just barking at a stranger in the street when you were walking the puppy, then you don't put the defensive drive there, or you do. Exactly, exactly. Of course, the, we want social dogs in normal life. Yeah. But we want to um, give them the idea that they have fun to fight against somebody when he makes pressure to, to them. And you, you know from psychology um, mm -hmm. that that uh, this social phase it's done when they come around 16 to 20 weeks old then yes. it goes uh, so it's it's a really it's a phase mm -hmm. and in this phase re you build the character of a dog mm -hmm. and and uh, when this when they come older then it's a little bit done and so when, when they learn it in this age 
it's like uh, written in a stone. It's for yes. the whole life. Yes. In normal life, you never can give them this feeling that they mm -hmm. are so strong dogs and somebody, when they look there, they run away, they have, they, they have fear. And, and, and so, of course, and then we start step by step to give them more and more fight. And, and, uh, but they are always the winner, They're always the strong yes. part. They, they dominate the helper and it gives them so good feeling. And we never really we do this since 40 years or uh, more, more than four, yeah, more than yeah. or like 40 years. <laughs> and uh, we never had a bite accident in normal life. So, so it's not that our dogs come aggressive. It's right. they, they have fun to fight, mm -hmm. but they are really confident because uh, it makes them confident. And so they, they don't bite about who oh, the, uh, there is something dangerous. There is something. This mostly this other mo mo I'm not afraid of normal situations. Mm -hmm. but so, we say so when, so how will you differentiate between the puppy? You're walking the puppy in the street, and he starts barking at somebody, or somebody comes to your door in your house, and they whoa, 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 whoa barking um, to get them to say no. We're not going to bark there. But in the practice field we tease them and, and, and we bring them into this drive controlled. Yeah, but we have our rituals, for Got example. It. When we, we always, our rituals, we say them, uh, bad guy is coming, or, or and Got it. the helper comes out behind the fence, and, and so the picture, the rituals, and so, and so they learn to do it. Like, you must think it's like children, they go in judo or karate or something, Yes. Mostly in normal life, they are yes. really very friendly, confident yes. children. Mm -hmm. And when they go in sport, they, then they love to fight or yes. boxer or something. And so it, I think it's a, it's a little bit the same. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think that's an important piece because so many people get, especially now, Mallies, and they try, they tease them and tease them and tease them without having the aspect of control and, and a system that, that they use. And then the dog just is always on edge. The, oh, the dog is always in that defensive drive. And it's less of a game or less of a behavior and more of a fear situation. And then the, the dogs are always biting. And in my work, that's what I deal with so much. These dogs are just out of control. So having it in a system um, in a, with a good training is obviously the secret. Yeah. I think that's really important because when when they come more and more confident and they become really strong dogs, they don't have to fight against ghosts. Ghosts. Yes. So, so they, they, they. Yeah. We, we never have problems with this. And of I course, we teach them. We say, them, "Oh, they can fight against the helper mm -hmm. two or three times a week, and they have a lot of fun to do this." And in normal life, we say, "Hey, everybody's your friend." Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's very, very controlled. Yeah, um, absolutely. You do something interesting. Your, your club, Hoiwinkel, is that, am I saying that right, Hoiwinkel? Yes, you say it right. Okay. Um, I love the name, by the way. <laughs> 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 I think it's just a cool name, Hoiwinkel. Um, you have, it's you it's have a some... little church. It's oh. a little church. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's the name of a little, little church. It's uh, so close to our close club. To our club. Ah, that's where it came from. Okay, I'm trying to think. Hoy, because hoy is hey, right? And Winkel. Yes, yes, yes. Really? So, okay, hoy Winkel. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Now. But it's, it's, it's right. It comes from hoy and uh, Winkel. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, hoy so and Winkel, yeah. Okay, yeah. people will have to Google what that means. <laughs> <laughs> we, like I said, when we do it in German, people have to have it on translator. You have an interesting style, and I'm bouncing all over because I can't stay on one topic with you. It's just too fascinating of a chat. Um, one of the things I like when I watch your training is you do very, very team oriented training. And the one example that I love watching, I love when I'm watching either Connie or you doing the foos exercise and you have a, you have a spotter, you have someone watching so that I don't ever see the, handler looking down and making sure the dog is in position or in contact you use a team a spotter 
that is saying, yes, the dog is looking up. Oh, the dog is a little bit slow. The dog is going a little fast. And this gives the handler the confidence to keep moving. And the dog doesn't get the pressure of the shoulder going back or anything like that and forcing the dog out of position. I mean, I think it's, it's incredibly brilliant. Um, is this something that you came up with on accident because, or, or just because you guys have been married for so long and you're, you're lucky to have each other? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's for the whole company. It's like everybody has a assistant handler. We always train together. We train in, in a team, of course, but every handler has an assistant handler who watches the train and gives them feedback. Mm. That that the handler uh, always it's, it's like a mirror. He can he can hear what the dog is doing. Yes, that it was a big problem. You know, when when the timing is not really good, for example, you reward the dog and he's not really sitting down. Yeah. Then of course it comes slower and slower, and the dog is the meaning. Oh, it's enough when I'm five centimeters centimeters over the ground. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, and it's always. So it's important to have somebody who gives you always feedback and always also a really uh, a good feeling when it's fine. He's, he, that he don't talks only about the faults. He must always say, "Oh, super, it looks fine. Ears yeah. are up, tail is up, dog is active." And so, and then the handler can go very proud and say, "Oh, it must be really nice." That mm. <laughs> so it gives, and you know, when, when the handler has a good feeling, the dog can have a good feeling. So it, it's it's really important. But, um, I think it's really good if you have a team. Uh, even the assistant handler, if the handler makes uh, good points, then the assistant handler also has, is proud and uh, has a uh, good feeling because it's also his work. It's, mm. it's good to have a team. Yeah, it's it's fantastic to watch you guys training. I think that's so important to have that, that team um, companionship. So... Um, in, in the three phases, because we have the phase, we have tracking, obedience, and protection, is there one of the three that you think that people tend to just overlook, like they don't put enough effort into it? Oh, I think nothing special. I think, oh. It's a hard question. Yeah, I know. Because I mean, everybody's always it, protection, really protection, protection. You have some, sometimes you have handlers, they, they love to go tracking, but they mm -hmm. don't love obedience. For us, I think we, we really love obedience. We love protection, not so much tracking. <laughs> it's not uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. It needs so much time always to go outside yeah. for tracking. It's, it's not that we don't. Uh, you what? Honey, I didn't hear that. No, we like it, but it's not our favorite. Yeah, the, so the tracking is your least favorite. No, yeah, but but the the. I don't know. If you can say it's so so. That okay. This this is more or less. Uh, so in in um, let's look at the two phases of protection and obedience. Where do you see? Because I know you judge as well, right? So where do you see people failing the most in obedience? What, what exercise in obedience is the most common where there are a lot of mistakes? In my meaning, it's uh, uh, concentration and contact from the dogs to the handler. That the dogs are not uh, mostly they. The dogs have the feeling they should work with the handler. They must work, and the handlers um, uh, are not able to fascinate the dog. That the dogs really love to do it. Mm -hmm. That they, when the handler says, "Oh, come, let's let's do obedience," that the dog mm -hmm. says, "Oh, I." I really love to do it. It's, it's, um, it's always done when, when your dog looks in your eyes and say, nothing is so important at the moment like to, uh, to, do, to work with you. Yeah. And, but very often in seminars, we can see the handlers are coming to the field and the dogs are always looking around. Is there something <laughs> what is better than to train with my handler? And, mm -hmm. and then, of course, it's hard for the handler to teach the dog anything because the dog is not interested in the handler. Yeah. And so that's, 
I think that's the biggest problem uh, in, in for the most people when mm-hmm. they train a dog, that uh, they are not able to uh, bring the dog in the right position, that the dog is really, um, he wants something from the handler. And, and he said goodbye to the environment, that he is not interested in other things, that he's mm-hmm. really only looking to the handler and says, what can I do, what should I do? Mm-hmm. And this is the most important thing in our meaning that the people learn to 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 hear a good job. You, to communicate you, with the dog also to, mm. to see if the dog is really happy or is he a little bit uh, nervous or is he a little bit shy or is he about that he don't know what to do if he makes the fault or something that things like this. Yeah. You you make many points about this too in your book where you talk about how you initially get the dog to do the, the engagement with a little kibble and you know are you ready to do it are you ready to do it are you ready to do it and then you have this amazing way and i there's no way i can explain it i think you have to read the book and it's by the way it's very well written in english so it's you know i was going to order the german one until i found out there was an english one so um, for english speaking people it gives you an insight on how to inspire and motivate a connection because it's not about the exercise it's about the connection is what you're saying right when they when the dog connects to you he'll do anything you want him to do but if you just teach him how to heal or jump or bring or whatever then you're only teaching him one behavior instead your idea in the book you teach about this connection how to build this incredible connection and take it from your house to your backyard to the park to the training field and you really do that in 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 phases you you don't do it where it's unfair to the dog no no i think that's the we we are the meaning that's really important. Yes, we this way. <laughs> yeah 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 so um do you find so one of the um phases in one of the one of the exercises i should say in um protection that i always worry about when I see it happening, and I, you might know what I'm going to say, is um, when I see it, when I see the dog, especially a Mally, going for a long bite, right? And my fear yeah. is always, I always cringe. I always go like, ah, you know, when they connect, because so, I've seen several times that the that the the helper doesn't get out of the way, doesn't catch the dog properly. Um, it, it's the, I mean, everybody's always worried about the stick hits. I, I could care less about stick hits. I think the long bite is one of those things where I just think, oh man, I hope that the person who's going to catch this dog is going to do the right thing. Can you talk about two sides? One, the side of the person teaching the dog and the other side, maybe even more important, the person catching the dog. How can we make that a better connection and less risk for the dog oh that's um there is of course one side is, is uh, to train the dog to have a good technique that, that he goes really direct to the speed most of the problem is when they uh, in our opinion when they are not really fast when they are slowing down Mm-hmm. And then they start to re- read the helper. When the helper goes a little bit to the left, to the right, and they also go with them, then mostly it comes the crash. Okay. So when the dog is really running straight and, and jumping and want, and has the desire to catch, it's mostly it's easy for the helper to catch the dog. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, it's really, really important to have a good uh, body from the dog. So we, we have the... This is... Uh, I think a lot of handlers they are doing not enough for the uh, for the muscles and the athletic, the, the athletic from from the dog because yeah. when, when we send the dog in the long long attack or, or we do it our sport we we have uh, we must also take care of our dogs that they have a, a well trained body a good yeah. athletic good muscles they are robust and so and we have to do something for this of course and of course. Like other sports, in, like in, a soccer in, player or, or yeah. hockey player or some, everybody trains the body that that he doesn't hurt, and and so in the help for, for the help of work, it's really a, that it's hard to say because of course they have to learn good technique and and, and then it's 
the, the clubs must must uh, take care of them and and select them and say oh in in a in a in a high level trial or in a uh, so so only help us we really are sure they can catch the dogs so but there is not 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 a really plan that we say of course we always try also here uh, to to say the help us what is important when they do this long attacks and catching the dogs from the distance and yeah but yeah there are it, it's like in every sport you have help us they are talented they have good uh, reflexes yes. they 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 have feeling and others they can do as long as they do it and it never comes good so yeah <laughs> because not everybody can come a good soccer player or, or, right. or a hockey player or something. yeah they yeah. need the talent yeah 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 so um in in the phase of, of of protection is there any place in the the various exercises between the the transport the the, the um the escape bite or anything is there any phase that you think people should spend more time on to build the confidence of the dog i mean i i just think there's so much connection and then disconnection, which is such an amazing part of the sport, where in many sports, it's it's a one thing. Obedience, you're always doing the same thing. And agility, it's always the same kind of thing. But in protection, there are the phases of obedience with me and then working away from me. So I send the dog out, he's biting, he's barking, he's holding until I come back. Um, what is the best technique for training that and building the dog's confidence being away from me and then his respect when I walk in and tell him to sit out and I take the stick and I do the transport or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what we do is always we, we separate the the, the um, parts of the exercises. So we we do the protection work with the helper, of course, that becomes dominant, confident, that he mm -hmm make later when when this is done when they are six seven months old we start with, with the first bite we give them the uh, yeah so so but but we never say them they must sit or make down or make foos or something we separate it and we teach our dogs is in homework so we do it in low drive when the uh -huh. dogs are able to learn to understand it's not a good idea to teach a dog something like this in protection work because the dog is so in high drive and he's not able to understand what you want from him. And then it starts that, that the people start with harder corrections mm. to go um, from the level with corrections over the drive. And, and But when you teach the dog that it makes sense to do something like like it's a key to get to go to the to come to the point to get yeah. the bite or something and you teach him this in low drive. And then when we understand this idea and you bring the drive up, mostly they want to do it better than before because it's more important to come there. You can think about the short escape uh, from the blind. Uh, every dog wants to make the down command because they know afterwards they get the bite. So yeah. every dog makes down easily. And that's the ideal uh, from, from all the things that you say, uh, make the sit in front of the long uh, attack and uh, to make the heal, all the things. But uh, in uh, high drive, they are not able to understand it. And right. so we separate with a toy, with, with, with a ball or, or, or something, or with, with another toy, you also can do it with food. It doesn't matter, we teach them. Uh, we, we make a situation what is uh, similar similar to protection yeah. work. And then we teach them the idea, and when this is really done, then we bring it in protection work, and so we have really no trouble with this, and that's so good for our dogs. I love it. I love that. I, I, I want to touch more on that, and I hope this is in your upcoming book on on protection because. Of course. Um, so much of this, and I was talking to a very good friend of mine, Frank Phillips, and he had the same idea where he said, don't put, don't put the pressure on and try to correct the dog in something. Take the pressure away. And we were talking about something even with a dumbbell retrieve. So in the protection phase, I think so many times we see the dog get so woo, 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 jacked up. And then we use all this pressure to, to say, hey, sit, no, sit. And then we expect the dog with that same energy 
to then go bite after we corrected him for doing exactly what we he should have been doing, right? So, so when you it's, when you're t- when you break it down for the dog, I'm, I'm fascinated by breaking is breaking it down for the dog in um, taking the protection out of it. So, for example, if you were going to do something like a um, the the long bite, the this, the handler's coming up, the the helper's coming up, is yelling, is is moving forward, and you're having your dog in a sit. Just for an example, how would you break that down for the dog? It's always we uh, when, uh, for example, when we hold them in the cutter, yeah, and there is a ball, yeah, and then we in front we let them bark. We say, oh, the first is always we say that oh, when he makes a lot of drives to the ball and he wants the ball, that of course that's important. He wants yes. to go there and wants to catch the ball. We say to them that's the key to go there. And okay. then when we teach them, for example, of course when he's a little bit older, we say to him sit. And then we, we are waiting, we are waiting, we say it with a friendly voice, we say sit, sit, sit. And if it needs help, we don't the dog when yeah. and we mm-hmm. wait that he, and then uh, it, it, it always comes the moment they sit down, and we said, hey, that's super sit, and we let them go. And so, and then you will see the dog, the, the, the most handlers, uh, they do the fall, they, they bring up the voice. They, uh-huh. stay, they can't wait and then they start to say hey sit and in this moment is uh, the learning by uh, it makes sense to do it um, it's it's blockaded it's done it's not possible anymore because you say to the dog oh you must do it and when he must do it then of course you are able uh, or the handlers are able to do this when there is a ball in front but then mm-hmm. when the helper is in front uh-huh. <laughs> then they need more, more not much more pressure. Yeah. But the dog says, oh, it makes sense to go there. When I sit down, I can go. Then they, they, they want to do it when it, there is a helper in front. Mm-hmm. Why they should do it more worse, they, they do it better because it's more important for them to go there. I see. They, but you must always take time and that they understand the idea that they say, oh, it's a key. To go there when i when i hear sit that's the only way that i can buy when i hear fools then uh, i have to do this and i can get the bite when i uh, and so we do the whole protection work the obedience parts on, on on this way and we do mm. this really since a well, long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> so even yeah. with something like the it's, transport when you're doing the transport like a rear transport yeah, for the dog transport Back chance, right? Yeah. So you yeah. then have the dog in a heel. He's with you in a heel, but he's looking at the at the at the helper. And he stays yeah. in connection with you, and you keep your voice easy. But if he breaks, he gets corrected back. But there's no punishment. In other words, it's just like no, you're not allowed to do okay. that. First, we teach our dogs. For example, again, he we say to him, "Oh, there are parking next to us. A ball is in front, yes. or something." But he wants a toy. And then we say them transport, and then um, it's mostly it's easier if you have an assistant handler, sure. and he helps to bring the dog in the right position, and the dog understands. Mm-hmm. Oh, when he listen the word, the command transport, yeah. the key is to go back a little bit back. We have we, we stand it. In a, we go with the left leg. The left leg is in the yes. back. The right is in the front, and the key is to go in the back, to go in contact. Content and look in front. And when this is done, we say that's super transport and he can get the ball. And then it needs not so long time if you say transport and they make jump and they stay there. And uh-huh. then they say, oh, that's the key. And then we bring it one step in front and we mm-hmm. say, okay, here is the next chance to find the standing position. And then if this is done, we make it for two steps, three steps, but the, the dogs are always hopeful and waiting for the stop. And then they want to be in the back and want to do all time that they can get the bite. And when they do this really well, then we bring it in protection work. And then it's always really very, very easy that they I love do it, it well. But we never do it before. We never teach our dogs something in protection work. We teach it always outside and then in homework for a toy. And when they understand the idea that they say that's the key to go there, 
then we bring it in protection work and so we never have trouble with this wow and that's really good for the dog it's fair for the dog yes very very fair for the dog you you said something also how um if you tell the dog to sit for example let's say on on the the long bite you tell the dog you said you never you say sit sit you don't say sit you don't you don't come down harder on the dog you continue to repeat it so you would use almost like a nagging type tone like sit 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 until they do it and then when they do it you praise and release as opposed to putting more pressure 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 to get but, the dog to sit no robert you must say i think yes we, we say our dog it's your problem you want to go there it's not my problem ah <laughs> we, okay yeah 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 it's, exactly that's it we 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 say our dog we have time we don't want i don't want to run there and bite it's you want to go there so it's really your problem and when you don't sit down i don't let you go and ah. the dog must but the problem is in protection work the dogs are not able to understand this idea yes. you must give them the idea outside in low drive yeah. when they can think about when they are able to, to uh, they are able to think yes yes, yes. Yeah. okay so then the common question is going to be for M from anybody is how do you bridge the gap? Do you, do you understand what I mean by it's an American expression? How do no. you bridge the gap? So how do you go from the dog has perfect obedience, perfect control in obedient in, in uh, with the ball, but now suddenly he sees the sleeve is out or, you know, the, the helper is there. And now we're looking, we're, we're moving into the protection phase, but we want to kind of, continue what we've done in this initial homework phase how do we bridge that gap how do we make that happen we we, yeah, we do it on the same way so for example we we, uh, we do the same situation with for example with a toy with a ball mm -hmm. we go to the field the an assistant handler is on the left side next to us we say yeah. to the when he moves a little bit we send him to the ball when he makes this fine so then then maybe we uh, go longer we go to the, the start point for the retrieves and then our dogs they learn to transport the hope from one mm. exercise to the next exercise when they don't get a reward here they are mm. hopeful to get it in the next moment I then see. bring the hope in the feet in the blind and so and then when when this is done in homework then we do the same with, with the helper but also we give them the, the idea when we enter the field, we let them speak to the to the to the helper. He's in front. The helper goes to the left side. We say foot. The dog goes with us. We send the dog, and then we do it step by step, so, so that it always makes sense for the dog. We never say you must do it, uh, and the dog says no, I don't want. So it always makes sense <laughs> for the dog. It, it's that it's a little bit of story behind this. It, it was in the time when I had my Bendix. I don't know. You yeah. know Bendix from. Of course. Home. It's the dog I was so successful with. Uh, yes. Yes. And when the dog was young, when he was like one year old or a little bit older, it was really hard to control this dog. It was a very, very strong dog, high drive, very low boost. And always, we didn't, uh, we, we don't yes. have this in this time. We don't have these ideas this, this, okay. to give sense to all what they are doing. And I, I have done it with on this traditional way with pressure, and always uh, I have done okay. as much as possible for me. But sure. and the next day, next training, he, next training, he forgot all. It was the <laughs> same fight against every time, every time. Wow. And I really, I, I, uh, it, it was the first dog in my life. I, we talked a lot. I said. I have no fun to train this dog. It, it's, it's, I don't want to punish my dog all the time. It's not, sure. not what I want. Yeah. And then, but we realized that down command in front of short escape, this works perfect. <laughs> I never <laughs> had to say it two times. Always he wants to do it. And, and, and we talked about this and we said, oh, he sh may, maybe it's a good idea to teach a dog all, all obedient part in the same way that it makes sense for the dog. Then he wants to do what he should do. And that's, right. and in this time where Spendix was one year old, all these ideas uh, was born. And it was the beginning of a new area in our training that, that huh. we really, and it, 
worked so perfect, this dog never made a fault in his life in, in protection. Because from this moment, we, but we learned, of course, we, we tried to, to, to teach our dog. We talked about, we, we stayed together with, with all the, also with the others in, in high Wien, with Flori Knabel, and so our, we trained together very, very intensive. And, and, but we, we realized it's not possible Teach us how to in, teach the dog <laughs> in protection. protection this. He was uh -huh. against all. And then it, it, it starts the idea. We said, oh, maybe it's a good idea to teach it out of protection work when the drive is not so up mm -hmm. and not so high. And and it's 15 years ago or, or, or longer. And in this time, we, we got all these ideas. And then, of course, it, the system comes every year better, better, better. Of more sure. detail. More details, details and so forth. Yeah, and since this time we train all our dogs on this way and it works really perfect. Wow. I mean, it's, I think it's fascinating that, that you can take this and break it down in a way where, I mean, obviously the, uh, the other side of the equation is people always talk about positive only, positive only, positive only, no corrections. And I, I have a big problem with that because I think it's a lie to people that dogs are still going to need a correction. But setting the dog up for success where less corrections will mean more to the dog is such a fair way for a dog to learn. No? Yes, of course, you always need the rules. You must say, hey, for example, when, when you say first he should sit down that he can get the bite. Mm -hmm. Of course, you must say the dog, there is no other way to get the bite at this moment. Right. Because for the dog, the easiest way is always to run there and, and bite. <laughs> so <laughs> you must say, hey, that's not an option. <laughs> I, yes. That you go. And of course, this is no. And always for this, you need uh, some uh, corrections, but not this hard corrections for yeah. learning. It's it's just say that's the only way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, mm. I always say I don't like to beat up a dog, and I think so many people in you know in the protection sports and in obedience as well, they end up beating up the dog as opposed to just using a correction and. On the other side, you have people who constantly let the dog get away with something and they never say no and they never correct the dog. And I think both of those schools just end up with very confused dogs, you know, that, that don't have a clear picture on what, what should be happening. Absolutely. Yes. It's, it's the same in our life. We also, we, we have rules when, when the government, for example, they say you can drive on the on the street with your car, maximum, like in Germany, 100 kilometers. Yeah. And you have a sport car and you want to drive 200. Right. But when, when they, <laughs> it's not allowed and, and, and they, the government punish you, when sure. you do it. And sure. so that's the reason why you, you okay. And then you say, oh, it costs too much money. <laughs> right, right. So, so <laughs> yes, and it, it's need, normal. You that, need rules and you need also that there are consequences if you break yes. some rules. Yeah, and yeah. You know, there's an interesting thing I want to ask uh, you, Connie, about, and that is in the sport, we see so many great female competitors now. And I think it's so interesting. And I think, um, and I watch my wife training her dog, and she's a fantastic trainer. She does agility with her dog and has master's titles and all that. Um, do you see, Connie, a difference in the way dogs respond to the training of women versus men? I think um, in the past it was really a lot of men only that do the dog sports, mm -hmm. especially in Germany. I, I remember only men are sitting in the clubs and they train the dogs. And so I think it's often you have the feeling now it comes more and more that also the the ladies who start to train the dogs, and uh, but um, they want to, they are, uh, have open mind. They want to uh, listen to new ideas, and uh, especially the old men, they say, "Oh, I have done it for twenty years in this way. I want to do it. It works, and I yeah. want to do it on the same way." So they don't, um, um, uh, they don't do the modern style. And so it, I think that's the most different. Uh, but you can't say it's so strict. <laughs> <laughs> right. The good, yeah. the good luck in our sport is that they need us as a help. 
Yeah, thank God, or else we'd be gone. <laughs> no, but it, it is an interesting thing, the dynamic of seeing people like you who are so in love, so been together so long and are in the same sport where it can be such a conflict, right? There can be such a, um, uh, a conflict between the, the argument between helping somebody and I wouldn't do it this way, I want to do it that way. And it can lead to discussions. I mean, my wife and I have an easier time with it, but I see so many people who do it together, who have so many fights, you know, back and forth with, yeah. with their partners. Yes, of course. It, it's because it, it's always, uh, yeah. The if it works, when we train in the morning, perhaps, and all went fine, fine, then we are happy, then we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as there's no mistakes. <laughs> super but if yeah. something works not well then of course both of course yeah as long as you're both down or both happy it's okay yeah. yeah it's bad if one yeah, person's happy and the other one is sad then it's a bad relationship <laughs> right? yeah. but let me in, in this time we learn to train together so that we uh for example if when i train with connie and i what both both sides? What we never want is that when when we have a trend, the, the 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 assistant handler like this yeah. Connie, she said, "What have you done? This is not good." <laughs> so of course that, that's not. Uh, then always it starts a fight. Sure, so sure. The same on the other side. So it's always much better. We we, we got the training. We when when we uh, the meaning something is not like it should be. We take the mobile phone with the camera, mm -hmm. we make a video, yeah, yeah. we make a movie, and then when the training is done, then we yeah. talk about it. And then I, I show that. Connie the movie, I say, Connie, look, Do you really want I, to I have the feeling this is not like it should be. <laughs> gotcha. uh, and, and then, of course, it's her decision when she said, but uh, for me, that's not important. For, for uh, Then right. I have to accept it. And yes. not, uh, it's not good when I then, in the next training, I always say, don't do this, don't do that, and that's yeah. not good, and that's not good. So uh, it, this is the way we, we learn to do it together. That, that's good. No. Do you train, do each of you have your own dog that you train, or do you train the same dog? That's an interesting question. No, each has, has uh, own. Everybody has. Everybody gets their own dog. Okay, that's important. Always, you, always. <laughs> I think so always. too, but I just, <laughs> I didn't know. That's the that reason was... why we have four dogs. Yeah, yeah. And most and, we have old dog and a young dog yeah and 30 years of marriage <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't have that hey, so let me ask you one um, last thing and again i would love to have you come back and talk more and uh, like this because it's this is such a fun conversation um <laughs> training schedule like how do you break up your training schedule between, I mean, tracking, obviously you go, or, you know, you, you're lucky in, in Germany, you have a lot of tracking in, in California area, we have no tracking, it's all dirt, and it's not good tracking. Um, but yeah. for obedience and protection, how do you schedule it? Do you train every day? How many minutes do you train the dog per training session? And how many sessions do you do a day? Can you give um, a breakdown of what you do and how you do that? It depends a little bit to the how old the the dog is, of course. Okay. And if it comes a competition comes closer or something like this, and we have all, mostly we have um, in our club we have a time from March to October where we, have, yeah. where we meet really continuous, and uh, winter we have a little bit more break, and then we train with the young dogs, with the really young dogs, or we say oh some little detail they want to make better and that we are hard concentrated with this. And during the year from March to October, I think we have around three times a week the tracking and obedience close to every day, I think. Yeah. But not the whole obedience, it's only some of the only little details. So the whole the down will come to come in the front set or, or something like this. And um in protection, um we have I have the good luck to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things in, in the club, the most uh, three times a week, something like this. So yeah, three but, times uh, a week, okay. Really, uh, if you do this with this homework and separate, uh, 
then you can do so much out of protection work that, that you don't need so much protection mm -hmm. work to yeah. to compete. That it's, and you don't um, spend so much time in when, when you have a normal training with a helper. And you and you want to teach him hold and bark and healing parts and transport and line surgery. So there is no time for the real protection work with the helper. You mm -hmm. need you spend so much time for 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 this, and mm -hmm. if you do it at, in homework out of uh, your normal training, it, it <laughs> it's a big yeah. advantage, of course. Yeah, and but you would still say a couple times a day, maybe 10, 15 minutes to go do some obedience and do something with your dog. Yeah, but for example, it, it depends on the age. But if we have a puppy, for example, we our idea is to. Um, to use the food drive, the normal food drive from a puppy for all the training. So we don't give the food in a bowl. We mm -hmm. give it all that the dog makes healing parts with us or sit or down or coming to us. We, we give really all the food in, in mm -hmm. the training. And so a puppy, we, we feed them three, four times a day. So sure. we have to train them three, four times. Got and, it. But it's a lot of fun. And of course, yeah. and then, but we give them a lot of emotions and it's so, it's so the what what is the right word the needs of, of a puppy mm -hmm. they uh, the most important needs what a puppy brings he wants the social contact and of course he needs the food to survive mm -hmm. so if you give them both in your training of yeah. course they they uh, it's the highlight of it's, it's the highlight of the day three four right. times nothing is like when you train the dog and so that's uh, yeah so but you have to do it of course but it's not work it's it's fun we we love to do it and so we yeah and later it's, it's like when you said we i think we train every day with our dogs and not always the whole program we we, we train details we, we when well come in front sit or so we do a lot in the house in the living room so or it's not that we always go outside in the training field we do it so much at home mm -hmm. yeah i see uh, you're on your a few Instagram. minutes yeah, I see your Instagram. You're always doing something in the living room or something. In the living room. Yeah. So you, you know our living room. <laughs> I do. I do. I'll sleep on your couch when I come over. <laughs> um, yeah, so so anyway, in closing, again, I, again, I'd like to extend an open invitation for you to come back. I mean, I, th I think the chat is fascinating. I think you're both um, really interesting and, and good people. I mean, I, I like your connection to the dogs and coming f at your level to hear what you're saying, I think my biggest takeaway is what, I, what you said when we first started talking, and that is you are responsible for that dog when you take it as a puppy. It's not an option to get rid of it and get another one. And I think that's a lesson people should hear for dogs because- But it, it, it's, uh, it's really the truth. Never in my life I sold a dog. It's from, wow. from my first dog. When I was 14, I got them, I, I always, had yeah. the whole life. I never sold a dog. Also in Hoiwing, it's so successful club and team. Mm -hmm. It's uh, also here. It's not the style to to sell the dogs. We always Love it. have. We, we take puppy keep and dogs. we keep. No, well, yeah. we have them the whole life, and we uh, try to that. do our best. And I think you do. How how many people are on your team, Hoiwinkel? Oh, it's mostly around uh, to train the dogs around uh, between 10 and 15. So. Oh, that's all. Wow. We have in, in training. Interesting. Sometimes I'm sure. a bit more, I'm... sometimes a bit. It, it depends on uh, sometimes we have, you know, uh, but, it's... but around 10, maybe a little bit. So but I'm 10, sure there's 15. thousands of people who want to come join with you though, right? <laughs> <laughs> From yeah. all the other teams, they want to come but... over to Hoiwinkel. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, um, so intensive. Again, intensive. Sorry. Say, say, kind of <laughs> no, I only want to say it needs so much time to um, to train as a team with, with the dogs. So yeah. um, it's not only that one dog is walking and another one can can walk next to them. It's yeah. uh, one dog has one or two assistant handlers, and so they, they work with this dog and then they together work with the next dog and mm -hmm. so it's needs time and it's not possible to i think to 
to have of course. more I'm, I'm just I'm just saying people want to. They probably want to be a member of your team because you're the winningest team, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should just charge more. But we, we give our best to bring our ideas uh, all over the world. And, and, and we, we have done the books. And now we have this online, uh, this video platform, the, this talks for online. We have, it's like seminars. We have it also uh, with English subtitles now. Right. We have. And, so, and yeah, and I think it's also good to see and to understand the ideas, and you can see our dogs, and we explain what we are doing there, and yeah. Great. Well, I'd like to put a link to all your all your information in this video, so when people watch it, they can go right to you. They can order your book. I know you can get this book in the United States, and again, it's called Successful Together. Or erfolgreich yeah. zusammen, right? That's in German, erfolgreich zusammen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, I can't recommend it enough. I've read through it one time. I'm going through it the second. I always read a book one time, and then the second time I go through and I use my highlighter, and I highlight everything important. And I'm on my second highlighter because um, there's so much good information in here. You'll see that um, if, no matter what page I turn to, you'll see I've got something, something highlighted, some information about anything from healing uh -huh. to sitting to um to, to to the front and everything just you really break down every exercise and i rarely have people on the show that are trainers because i think you know most of the information i have on there is training but um you guys set up different bar for people so if you're interested in igp or ipo there's very few places to go to really learn there's very few books on the topic that i think are worth anything um, this one, I think, is worth everything. It's a very, very good book. So I hope you sell every one. And I hope you'll reserve me a copy of the protection one. Is there any hope of doing a tracking one or a tracking? You're not gonna, you don't need a book on that. Yes, we, we talked about it. We talked about it. <laughs> it's a thin but, book, though, right? <laughs> it's not our favorite, but of course we, we know how to do it. <laughs> yes, yes. So when do you yeah, think the uh, protection book is out? Robert, when? Robert, Robert uh, yeah. this stuff, we, I think we have to put on the light. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's getting dark in Germany. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> much better. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, much better. We can we can we can do a whole new interview. <laughs> we have evening. Yeah. When do you foresee the uh, protection book coming out? We are hopeful this year. It's okay. I think the half half of the book is is, is translated, and so we. Uh, but but it's a lot of work. We of course we need people. They it's not easy to to you cannot give it to a professional translator because he must no. know uh, our system. He of course sure. must be a top spot, mm -hmm. uh, and so otherwise, uh, yeah, it's not possible to. And so, but we have people. They help us in translation and good, uh, more or less the same. They have done the obedience book and so, yeah. It's, it's oh. a great book. I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, is it available in German now, or you just you don't even have it available in German yet? Yes. The protection book in German, yes. yes. Oh, it's available in German. Yes, yes. Oh, I can order that. That's that's okay. You're I didn't realize able. that. What is it? <laughs> you are able to read. Yeah, I can read German. Because yeah. German is much better than our English. No, I don't know. I, I sometimes surprise myself and I can get it and then sometimes I lose my thoughts. It depends. It really depends. But I enjoy speaking. It's my, my first language was German. I was, I, you know, I lived in uh, Koblenz, in the area from Koblenz, for my first yeah. uh, seven years. So, so it was my first language. Yeah, so... so. Deep... Yeah, in Schweizerdeutsch, yeah. that I know. I that really too. hope our English is 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 good enough that uh, everybody can understand what we want to say. It's uh, we was of course a little bit excited about this podcast. Yeah. It's the first podcast in our lives. Yeah. Wow, well, I'm <laughs> I'm flattered. In then English. <laughs> well, I hope you. I and hope we know we'll do you another are. One. And we, we of course we know you are really very very popular and you have a lot of followers and so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And and I hope that my followers will 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 buy your book and will follow you because I think they're going to get good information there. Um, especially if um, I mean, not that many people I've, that follow me are in the sport, but those who are should definitely know um, who Connie and Peter Sharik are. And if you if you don't know who they are, then you li you're living under a rock because um, you guys I've I've watched you for 
ever since I got my first Malinois, and I've always been impressed by. Thank you so much. By, so, no, I have. It's a, that's a little, a little secret. I don't talk much about it, but there's a, a very small handful of people that I look up to, and you guys are definitely in that in that category. So oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So I will I will get this edited. Um, I'll put put your links down below. I hope people will will give you a follow on Instagram, YouTube, and everywhere, as well as your site, and as well as reading um, this very very worthwhile book. And I invite you back anytime you like to come back and talk about anything. Thank you so much. Okay. 